Hi everyone, today's video is about 161 Maiden Lane in New York City. It's a 60 story, 670 foot tall reinforced concrete residential structure that was intended to be high end luxury uh, condominium for up to 99 units. After the building was topped out in 2018, construction was halted due to observed tilt of approximately three to four inches at the top of the building. This uh, building has a pretty narrow aspect ratio, so the amount of tilt was quite noticeable at street level. This story has a lot in common with the ongoing saga of the Millennium Tower in San Francisco, in that unanticipated apparent foundation problems led to extra costs, and in the case of 161 Maiden Lane, the building wasn't completed, no one's moved in, and now the whole project's involved in multiple lawsuits. But as we go through it in this video, I'd be interested in what your thoughts are comparing the two buildings. Is it similar in terms of foundation, in terms of overarching mistakes in geotechnical engineering and construction? Let me know what you think. So in this video, I'll tell you what my main suspicions are relative to the apparent cause of the foundation problems for this major residential structure in New York City and what could be done about it. For 161 Maiden Lane, the project was conceived in 2013 and initial site prep occurred in 2015. The original plan for the foundation was to place the building on driven pile foundations that extended to bedrock at depths of 130 to 170 feet. It's common design and construction practice to place high-rise buildings in this area of New York City on deep foundations, again, driven piles or even drilled shaft foundations. As it turned out, only a few bidders submitted pricing for the installation of the foundation at this project, and of those, they were all well over the estimate that was prepared by the developer and their engineer. This is when the project geotechnical engineer, RA Engineering, offered an alternative foundation type. This area of Manhattan consists of old landfill material that was placed to get rid of debris and also to increase the land area of Manhattan going back to the 1880s. So just like large areas of San Francisco that had been extended through reclamation, such material would make poor foundation materials unless it was removed or improved in situ. This is exactly what RA engineers and Hayward Baker proposed. Instead of excavating this material or using deep foundations, they proposed that this landfill material be strengthened by using jet grouting methods. Jet grouting involves the insertion of a probe underground and the injection of high pressure cement grout. The probe is spun while the grout is injected under pressure. As a result, soil and cement grout are mixed together forming a stronger mass of composite material. The diameter of the jet grout column is a function of the nozzle pressures and the duration that it's injected at a given depth interval. I was at a dam project in central Kansas that used jet grout columns to form cells of material in the dam foundation. The idea was to prevent lateral spreading is seismically induced liquefaction occurred in the foundation soil. Those jet grout columns varied in diameter from six to 10 feet, and they were installed by a company called Trevi Icos out of Italy. The developer for 161 Maiden Lane in New York is Fortis Property Group, and the prime contractor slash construction manager was Pizzarotti. Work was suspended in 2018 when Pizzarotti alleged that Fortis did not make adequate preparations for the building foundation, which again resulted in that building tilt of over three inches. Another structural engineering firm, Thornton Tomasetti, stated that the building tilt was actually four inches. No construction has been completed on the building during the last few years, while the parties are involved in a big court battle. Only the lower half of the buildings had the glass curtain wall installed, so the top half of the building remains exposed to the elements. Additional curtain wall installation was halted due to concerns that increased loading would cause additional building tilt. As I mentioned, this building had a total plan 99 residential units with anticipated sales prices ranging from one to $18 million. Currently, nobody lives in this building. It's my understanding that most of the contracts for unit purchases have been rescinded. Given that this project involves ongoing lawsuits, it's perhaps not surprising that a lot of technical information hasn't been made public, particularly with regard to the foundation performance. Just looking at what is known, I strongly suspect that the building tilt is associated with either a bearing capacity failure or it's due to settlement of compressible foundation soils. Fortis has alleged that Pizzarotti built the building out of plumb, which I don't believe for one minute. It's amazing to me when engineers deviate from using well-established foundation types in order to try and save their client money. There would have been zero concerns about the strength or settlement of pile-supported foundations, which extended to bedrock for this building had that been done. Instead, an atypical plan involving jet grouting for soil stabilization was used. Such a method has far more potential for variability due to variations in construction techniques and due to variations in the type and extent of foundation soils. Such a ground improvement method will also need to rely on an extensive program of construction observation and verification. 
And really, there's no information as to what extent this was performed. Also, as this was a novel foundation type for this large area of a building in New York City, was there any consideration given to constructing a test section and evaluating its performance under the application of, say, a temporary load? At this point, a clear determination needs to be made as to what's causing the foundation, apparently, problems, or certainly the building tilt for this structure. To me, it's likely that this foundation will need to be stabilized through the use of full-depth micropile extending to the bedrock and connecting to the existing foundation slab. A properly designed micropile remediation plan should be able to solve problems associated with the strength and compressibility of the jet grouted foundation soils, if in fact that's the primary issue, which I believe it is. In the meantime, this abandoned hulk of a building remains a real eyesore in Manhattan. I wonder if these big cities who approve these kinds of projects will start making developers post a performance bond. That way, if the project gets into trouble like this one has, the bonding company can either complete the building or tear it down. Such buildings are likely to become even more problematic given the current commercial and residential real estate crisis in such urban markets these days. Be sure to get your free digital download of my guide to the top civil engineering disasters of the last hundred years. The download link is in the video description. Thanks for watching, everyone.